So my life gets crazy with Brooke and Blake and husband that works 80 hours a day, I mean a week, and I decided to start my own business on top of it, which is insanely crazy. But thanks to the Iowa Clinic, they made it easy to see my doctor. And when I get there, she listens. So I feel like I have a partner. And before you know it, I can get back to my crazy, busy, insanely busy life where I have a busy business, busy husband, and busy twins. Oh, now where's Brooke? There she is. Care how you want it, visit iowaclinic.com. What up? It's Farmageddon week, and I'm ready to go. Let's get after it. Thanks to our friends at the Iowa Clinic, the Iowa Clinic Men's Center. Of course, Farm Story Meets. Check them out at farmstorymeets.com. Phenomenal concept. Straight from the farm. Great farmers here in the state of Iowa. Of course, it gets processed. And then to your front door. Everybody's doing these subscription things. Now you can help all these local companies and all these local people. The money goes straight to them. The great product goes straight to you. Check them out at farmstorymeets.com. Great Iowa Stater Ray is behind all of this. All right, let's get after it. Five storylines as we go in today. First, let's take a look at the Big 12 schedule. Iowa State with the night games. We get to watch a lot of games that will be uh, happening here um, this morning, throughout the afternoon, and then when the clones kick tonight at 6.30. Oklahoma State at Texas is a fantastic football game. Really looking forward to that. How does Texas bounce back after – uh, blowing that big lead in the Red River rivalry. I think Oklahoma State, listen, I mean, they're not, there's nothing sexy about them this year, but a really solid football team. Really reminds me of Iowa State. I don't know if they have as much offensive firepower as the Cyclones possibly can. Really good football game. I'm, I'm picking the upset, though. I think Oklahoma State wins that one in Texas. A future Big 12 game, BYU at Baylor. Really fascinating here, too. Baylor's offensive coordinator. Longtime offensive coordinator at BYU. This program should know each other quite well because of that aspect of this football game. Baylor is a slight favorite in that one. Texas Tech is at Kansas. That's a snore. We're not going to watch that one. Nobody wants to watch Texas Tech at Kansas. TCU is at Oklahoma tonight, of course. That game, you know, you get this new quarterback. Oklahoma's riding high. Gary Patterson. I Man, I, I don't know. Uh, I think TCU could uh, put a scare in the Sooners, but you could also see them. It's like now we got our quarterback and we're going to uh, to the moon uh, with Oklahoma. So there you go. That's your Big 12 schedule. Let's take a close look at Iowa State and Kansas State here uh, as we continue on in our countdown. And I want to talk about offensive firepower for the Cyclones. A legit question. It wasn't really there. For most of the season up until now, we saw glimpses against Kansas where Iowa State looks really sharp. You know, they, um, but, but it's still, it's against Kansas. So you've got to factor that in. What kind of an offense do we see? I think it's simple. Uh, that is a general question. But what Iowa State offense shows up after the bye week tonight in Manhattan? First half defense, I think is huge. Iowa State loses the Baylor game because the defense kind of was asleep at the wheel early on. Now, we've constantly seen this. Uh, Iowa State feels you out defensively early on and makes adjustments. They've won a lot of football games doing this. Just don't know if they can have that type of a sluggish start tonight in Manhattan and be able to come away with the win. So I want to see the defense. Listen, I, I get it. They give up some points early on, and then they usually correct. And I understand how it works. Uh, and it means that you have a really good coach because you can make adjustments. But I think they need to start a little faster compared to the last Big 12 road game, which they lost at Baylor. What about the punt team? What's going on with the punt team? Uh, we saw a new punter, uh, Shook, against Kansas. Is he the guy? Is Andrew Mevis in? Or is Corey Dunn the guy? I would say he's not been good with the punt team. Uh, their field possession numbers are awful. Some of the worst in the country. Listen, you're – on the road, I know it's boring, but this is a really big deal when you play the style of football that Iowa State does. So I'll be keeping a close eye on the punt team and how that looks, potentially any adjustments that were made in the bye week. Last but not least, just win. This game, Iowa State hasn't won in Manhattan. Actually, I exchanged text messages with the great Dan McCarney on Thursday night. Uh, last time Iowa State won, in Manhattan, he was the head coach in 2004. Meyer to Blythe, Iowa State outscored Kansas State 28-6 to in the fourth quarter. It was incredible. One of my all-time favorite Cyclone wins was that game. But, man, it has been brutal since then. Our minds all go back to 2015, the game that got Paul Rhodes fired 
Just down the football. I'm still fired up about that one. Um, and then two, so at 2015, we're like, it can't get any worse. 2017, it got worse. They picked up the flag against Alan Lazard. Just win. I, I, I don't. I, I think I echo the overwhelming majority of the fan base going into this one. Just win the damn football game. I don't care how. Get out of there at the win, and then we'll worry about Oklahoma State. But weird things happen in Manhattan. Seems to be an odd, odd place for Iowa State to play football. Hopefully, Matt Campbell can check another one off of the box. Coming up tonight, 6.30, of course, we'll have complete coverage. Jared Stansbury and Rob Gray are in Manhattan, so we'll check in with them. Uh, throughout the day, they'll have their post game show from the press box. Brett Meyer and I will be here at halftime, breaking down all the action. Of course, we'll have the instant reaction podcast and complete coverage of all the game at CycloneFanatic.com. Also, game watch if you want a place to go watch the game in Central Iowa. We'll be having a game watch at Buzzer Billy's. We're gonna have the banquet room in the back. If you are in Eastern Iowa, head on over to the Mississippi River Distilling Company. They got big screens. It's gonna be awesome. Thanks to Matt Van Winkle for producing today's program. And uh, again, we'll be back here at halftime on all of these Cyclone Fanatic social media feeds. So long. Go Cyclones. Let's go get one today.